Hello friends, welcome to Physics and Animation. In the previous video, we discussed electric flux, which is the measure of electric field lines passing through a given area. Mathematically, electric flux is equal to the integral of E dA cos theta. In the case of three-dimensional surface, we generally use the term surface area. So we can also express electric flux as the integral of E dS cos theta where ds represents a very small surface element. Now let's consider this question. If a charge creates the electric field and we introduced a new term called electric flux to measure the quantity of electric field, is there any mathematical relation between electric flux and charge to explain the relationship between charge and electric flux? In 1835, the German mathematician and physicist Carl Friedrich Gauss provided a relation According to this relation, if we consider an imaginary sphere of radius r, inside which there is a positive charge enclosed, then the total electric flux phi e linked with the imaginary surface will be equal to q divided by epsilon naught, where epsilon naught is the permittivity of a free space. This is known as Gauss theorem. It says that charge should be completely enclosed within the surface for Gauss law to be valid. In simpler terms, Gauss law applies only to closed surfaces. Now let's understand the proof for the Gauss theorem. We know that for an imaginary spherical surface, if we consider a small element ds, then the electric flux d phi e can be expressed as the dot product of the radially outward electric field e caused by the charge q and the perpendicular surface area vector ds which is equal to E ds cos theta. Here theta represents the angle between the area vector and the electric field vector and both of these vectors are pointing outward normal. Therefore, the angle between these vectors is 0 degrees. In a similar way, if we consider multiple ds elements, since all the ds elements are located at a distance r from the charge q, the electric field intensity will remain constant over the entire spherical surface. Additionally, since the electric field is radially outward, the value of theta for all the elements will be 0 degrees. Now let's return to our calculation. To calculate the total flux, we need to integrate E ds cos theta. We have already seen that theta is 0 and the electric field E is constant. So we can simply take cos 0 and the electric field E outside the integration. In the case of a complete integration over the spherical surface, it will become 4 pi r square and the value of cos 0 is 1. We already know that the electric field is equal to 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught multiplied by q divided by r square. Ok, now the 4 pi and r square will cancel out. Hence we obtain the result as the closed integral of e dot ds being equal to q divided by epsilon naught. Since we are performing integration over a closed surface, we represent it by placing a circle over the integration symbol. So we have proven that the electric flux linked to a closed surface due to a charge enclosed in it is equal to q divided by epsilon naught. In other words, we can also express it as 1 upon epsilon naught times charge q. Ok, as we have seen, in order to calculate electric flux, we imagined a surface around a point charge where the intensity of the electric field is same at every point. This type of hypothetical surface, which is considered to simplify the calculation, is called a Gaussian surface. A Gaussian surface can be used to calculate the electric field or electric flux for a point charge or even for a continuous charge distribution. Let's discuss some important points about Gauss law. First, Gauss law holds true for any closed surface, regardless of its shape. This means that no matter what the shape of the surface is, the electric flux linked with it, denoted as phi e, will always be equal to q divided by epsilon naught. Second, a Gaussian surface represents the total sum of charge inside it. It showcases the contribution of all charges q present inside the imaginary Gaussian surface. Third, 
It's important to note that a Gaussian surface should not pass through an individual charge, but can pass through a continuous charge distribution. In the next video, we will see that how we can calculate the electric field for a continuous charge distribution by the application of Gauss law and Gaussian surface. Fourth point, if a charge Q is placed outside the Gaussian surface, it will not have any impact on the Gauss's relation electric flux equal to Q by epsilon naught. Although the charge outside will contribute to the electric flux, the resulting electric field line from the charge will enter the Gaussian surface at one end and exit at other end, effectively cancelling out the contribution from the external charge Q. So that's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. In the next video, we will talk about application of Gauss's law.